Hey, hello, my name is Waves. I'm a producer from Toronto. I've been producing for about the past 12 years. I have three solo Kingsways and a collab with my boy Nahum. So my background is Somali. I was born in Italy, moved here to Canada when I was about like two years old. But then I was pretty much raised on Western Europe. Well, I started getting into music production. Honestly, it's kind of a weird journey because before I was in music, I was always into art. I used to draw since I was a kid. I was the kid like everybody would come to in class and be like, yo, can you draw this for me? Whatever, for a project or whatever. I wasn't really like interested in music production, but I was always interested. How do people make these things, you know? Like what are they using? So I think like in grade 12, I finally got FL Studio. I tried it out and I was like, yo, this is kind of sick. And then I kind of like never used it again. Then the next year, I decided to try again. And then I just never stopped using it ever since, you know? The music that influenced me a lot was traditional Somali music. That's kind of like what I grew up hearing around sometimes in the house. I never really like listened to any like mainstream or any type of music until I was like in middle school, you know? Like I first heard of like Eminem or whatever. Like, When I was in like university, I started putting my music like places online and I started getting people like hitting me up and even emailing me and stuff like that. And then, well, there used, there was this guy named Slinky. He actually like was probably one of the first, probably is the first artist I think I ever worked with. That was like my first experience of like figuring out how to produce music, right? So I didn't know what an audio engineer or any of that stuff was, right? In real time, I was learning what it meant to actually be a part of a project and see it from start to finish. I think I met like the most important people of my whole career during that time. So I met Dot, because I found him on, literally on Twitter, audio engineer from Toronto. So I hit him up, he worked with us. And then ever since then, like Dot has been a very important person in my life. Found out what Kingsway was like I just downloaded some random drum kit that had like like 10 gigabytes of like random like stuff in there. And then I saw a bunch of Kingsway stuff. I should have bought them, but I didn't know, you know, like I, so that's when I first started seeing Kingsway and I'm like, what is this stuff? You know, like this stuff is really cool. And I didn't realize that it was somebody actually making these things. I, I didn't know what it was. I was just like, these things sound really cool. And then I think I, I really started like understanding what Kingsway was like after, if you're reading this too late, that project. I was like, okay, like, who's this guy, Frank Dukes? I keep seeing him on all these credits. And then I'm like, oh, he makes samples. Oh, he makes Kingsways. I have these packs, you know? So that's when I finally made that connection. And then when I was interning, I was able to, like, really see how things are actually being made and stuff, you know? So During my time making my three solo packs, I think I've learned quite a lot, actually. In the beginning, when I, was, when I made my first pack, like, uh, it was just more just raw, like, ideas trying to make you know samples right and uh and honestly to me that's my personally my favorite pack i think as i've progressed i've i've learned like how to make great better samples because before i didn't really care i would just do whatever i can and then if it just sounds cool i'm like yo this is cool right i didn't know anything really like i was just throwing paint at a wall and seeing what looked cool you know so i used to like go on Instagram live a lot and I used to try to make like beats or samples on live and then I used to kept keep getting asked like hey do you have a discord and I'd be like no I don't have a discord but do you guys want me to make one and then a lot of them would be like yeah if you make one I'll join so I was like sure so I made a discord I just called it where's the cook up wasn't really like thinking too much about it honestly I was just like yo let me just make this there was like 10 people in there you know and then I would like talk to them and then and then eventually clubhouse came along I made Where's the Cook-Up, like a club called Where's the Cook-Up on there. And then I would just make rooms and then all of my producer friends that I've met over my years of producing, a lot of them have reached like specific levels of their careers where they were doing pretty well. So they would come in and hang out and we would just chat about nothing really. Like it wasn't even, most of the stuff we were talking about was not even producer related. We were just hanging out. They were in an environment where they don't have to just constantly be just talking about music. It was like a barbershop vibe. So the bigger producers started coming in. Like people like Cardo would come in and Bink would always come through and, and all these guys. And then like we obviously did talk about music stuff a lot too, but 
it was, I guess, the balance of like being able to just hang out and just chill attracted a lot of people. So Where's the Cook Up ended up growing to like 10,000 members. It's just like, that's just a true testament to like what community can do and just creating an environment for people to just meet each other. Anything could really happen.